preparing yourself for the end game of Enshrouded can be pretty challenging as to get your hands on the absolute best loot in the game, you sometimes also have to upgrade your base, strengthen the flame to gain access to some top tier farm locations. While today, ladies and gentlemen, I found another farm which I am very much looking forward to sharing with you guys, including some of the community. A whopping total of six different farms which you can use to get your hands on the absolute best weapons and armor in the game. And we're also going to check out which of them is the best for you to farm on. So what are we waiting for? Let's get farming. Before we get started, I spent over five hours recording all these farms and even more editing afterwards. So it would mean the world to me if you can spare one second of your time, hit that like button to support the channel and also share your thoughts about the farms in the comments down below. Already very much appreciate it. If you have any questions, suggestions for future videos, be sure to leave them right there as well. Anyways, let's get to the farm. As already covered in yesterday's video, I'm going to link it in the top right of the screen. There are different types of chests you can find in a shrouded. We have wooden chests with those iron bands. These basically give you consumables primarily, sometimes some potions, arrows, and scrolls, while silver chests are the ones which start to drop some decent loot. Most likely uncommon and common gear, sometimes some rares, and on a very rare occasion, both epics and legendaries. Instead, you want to focus on at least a golden chest, as these dramatically increase the drop chance of rare items, like late game armor sets, as well as not only epic, but also legendary weapons. There's one more tier above gold though. These are the ornament chests or ornament golden chests, which also look gold, but they have this diamond inlay. Not only do these already have an almost guaranteed drop chance for both epics and the best armor set pieces in the game, but they also come with a 30 to 40% chance to drop legendary gear. So long story short, these are the type of chests you wanna focus on. Everything below that is going to be less efficient. Very important for some of these farms, it's required to upgrade your flame shrine to a certain level, maybe even to the absolute highest. So for that, you want to commune with your flame and strengthen it to basically get access to higher level shrouds so they don't instantly consume you. So let's start off with one which I found earlier. An amazing farm in my opinion, as it allows you to easily get your hands on almost the absolute best gear in the game. It's only two levels lower, while you will already find top tier armor sets right here. It actually comes with one of those ornament chests, which I haven't seen yet on other videos, and you don't need the maximum flame shrine level to get there. So what you want to do is quick travel to the Kindle Waste Fast Travel, the ancient pillar which you can find in the very eastern part of the map. Then you want to jump off and deploy your glider, fly towards the southwest to the Ridgeback Mine. Specifically, you want to aim for either this circle on the map or that one, which are both just a little bit out of the shroud, which means you can actually place an altar right there, which is going to make picking up legendary gear a lot easier. So we're going to land on top of this one, place your flame shrine, and there we go. If we open up the map, well, this is very close to this shroud route, and you guessed it, there you will find one of those ornament chests. I always mark these as red on the map because, man, they are just so nice. And now we're simply going to search for a little camp where you can find a campfire as well. So there we have two of our bad guys. What you're going to do is simply run to this chest right here, kick it open and look at that. We already found the core striker. We're instantly going back to the main menu, of course, so we don't have to deal with the bad guys. We're going to reload the progress and there we are back at the flame shrine. So if I open up the backpack for a second, check it out. We just found a gore striker melee weapon. Very important. This one is 23, not 25, but you can already see that this farm is super easy to do as you don't need to have the maximum flame shrine level while you can already find some top tier loot right here. Second time, we get a noble sword. So let me quickly fast forward the video so you have a better idea of what the exact drop chance is of this specific chest. So you can compare it with other farms. See for yourself how efficient it will actually be compared to those. We get 11 items, as you can see, but five of them are already legendary. So that means a pretty decent drop chance for this rarity. We didn't find any armor, but you can already salvage all the trash loot, let's say, for some better stuff. Let's do that one more time. So then we have 12. Okay, that's an ornate wooden bow. 
Is this the best farm to get your hands on high level legendaries without doubt one of them, but not for the absolute highest level. But let's check out farm number two. For this one, we're gonna once again quick travel to the ancient spire Kindle Waste, as from this location we can reach a sun temple, which some of you might already know about. Anyways, this is where you want to go to northeast of the ancient spire Kindle Wastes. This is where you will find a sun temple. I'm not the only one who decided to place a flame altar right here, but let's check out the entrance. I actually made some upgrades to this place to make the farm even more efficient. But when you're standing in front of the spark, let's say you can move to the right, then move to the left once again. And this basically brings you to the entrance of the temple. This is where I also placed my shrine. Some of you are probably already wondering, hmm, how did you do this? As you're normally not able to place it all the way there, let's first check out the loot. So when you enter this place and go all the way down, follow the staircase back to the left. Well, this is where you can open up a door enter it and look at that. This is where you will have that chest with most likely also a legendary item inside. So if we now return to the main menu and log back in, well, this is what brings us right in front of this door once again. And we can only spend a couple seconds basically reach that chest either from the left or the right stairs as this will both bring us to this position. Check it out. This time we got our hands on some Spellbinder boots. Very important. Level 23 right here on the armor. So not the absolute highest level set parts you can find. So if we open up our inventory right here, you can see that weapons will actually be maximum level while armor will be slightly lower. Still though, this is a unique piece of gear which you won't find for level 25. So let's fast forward the video once again and open up this chest, let's say 12 times, just like we did with the previous one. So you can determine if this farm is going to be worth your time, how efficient you will get your hands on a legendary right here. For this specific flame shrine, you're going to need your altar to be level five, not level six. I think maybe even four can do the job, but it's definitely not the maximum level. So this one is also very accessible. All right, so here we are with 12 items. As you can see, the majority of the items we found are basically epics, while we only get two legendaries this time, bad luck, two times a Shadowbane and two times the Spellbinder boots. But not only the Spellbinder can you find right here, but also the Gloom Monarch and also the Hawk Glider set, which is pretty nice for gliding. So this time a little bit less lucky with the legendaries while they are maximum level. Also a couple set parts, which unfortunately aren't, but this without doubt is an amazing place to farm for both. For this specific farm, I want to give a quick shout out to Katus, another YouTuber who covers Enshrouded, basically came up with this video idea first. Maybe it came from somebody else, but I saw you doing it, so well played with this farm. I think this is definitely one of the better farms out there, especially in terms of getting your hands on some sweet armor sets. So let's check it out. For this one, you want to fly exactly the south west wind direction from the ancient spire kindle wastes we're basically gonna fly over the ridgeback mine and get all the way to the deep cut which you can pretty easily reach if you have the maximum level glider be sure to check out my guide to get your hands on it by the way which you can find in the top right of the screen all right so here we are i definitely recommend you to place a flame shrine at the very center of deep cut at this exact position a hill basically which allows you to easily check out all the different chests in the town so we basically have a silver chest at that exact location we have another silver chest which you can find right there so this makes it pretty easy to just instantly jump into the house and in the distance right there we can see one of those big mamas and inside that cave you will basically find a golden chest so you heard that right unfortunately no ornament golden chest while they do all come with the absolute highest loot in the game including some pretty cool sets you want to farm for so first we're gonna glide to the house with the silver chest where you can also find one of these green fellas if you want to prevent getting stent from one of these characters simply use a dodge roll or blink away when they start their attack animation after that, you want to jump out, use your glider and fly towards the golden chest, which you can find behind the matron inside the cave. Again, nothing too fancy as loot, while right now we're going to quickly fly towards the final chest, also a silver one, if you use your glider and drop down in this house. If you're going to check out all the chests on foot, you're definitely going to need a felling axe to reach some of them, while this is hands down the fastest way to pick up every single one of them. So we got ourselves a common staff, 
a rare flail, as well as a common forest longbow. That's pretty bad luck, I guess. Let's try it again. So this time we got our hands on a shocking ice wand, an eagle eye chest, which I still need. So that's an amazing one to find, as well as the arrow striker, also a common weapon. So unfortunately, pretty low chances on the legendaries right here. Let's do that one more time. So we have our friends right here, instantly dodge those. So here we are once again at the flame shrine. You can see that, yeah, we got some uh, scraps, which we're not going to count with the loot. But out of the 12 items, we actually get two eagle eye set parts, which is one of the best sets in the game. So definitely recommended to farm this location. While unfortunately for legendaries, this place, I think, is going to disappoint you. If you plan on farming both, I think this is an amazing place to do so. While unfortunately for exclusively legendary farming, this is not going to be the best place to do it. Anyways, let's move on to farm number four. For this one, once again, make your way to the Ancient Spire Kindle Waste, the fast travel which allows you to reach all these farms without a problem with the maximum glider. But what we're gonna do right now is double jump and glide all the way to the southeast, very close to Scatterbone and the Sun Temple, which you can already see right in front of us. But what we're gonna do is fly slightly more to the east. I haven't even used my updraft, so this is very doable without any of the upgrades, but this is where you want to land. I think an amazing place to also place a flame shrine, which I recently did, made myself a nice base right here. So this is where you want to be, just a little bit south of the shroud route. If we zoom out a little bit on the map, well, it's also northeast of Scatterbone, where we picked up the ghost glider. But this shroud, you don't have to enter it to get your hands on some sweet loot. But I actually did make an upgraded shrine for this. An altar very close as quick travel, because trust me, guys, this is an absolute best place to get your hands on an unlimited amount of runes. As it's right next to this chest right here. If you open it up, 100% chance of finding the Shroud Weaver. This not only is one of the best staves in the game, but you can also salvage it for 205 runes. If we quickly get back to the main menu and relock, well, this will instantly reset the loot inside the chest. So you can spam farm the stuff, get your hands on an unlimited amount of these. Of course, you want to salvage these afterwards because you only need one, but this is going to give you thousands and thousands of runes this chest unfortunately exclusively drops the stuff. So every time when you open it, well, you will find the Shroud Weaver. So that basically translates to a lot of runes per hour. If you salvage all those with some quick math, that's over 50,000 runes per hour, ladies and gentlemen. So definitely an amazing farm to do. This is not the only thing you want to be doing in this specific area, though, as you can find even more loot. For this specific farm, I want to give a quick shout out to Mordorim, another YouTuber who covers and shrouded and basically found a pretty efficient way to deal with the boss right here, which can sometimes also drop legendaries. So from this quick travel location with the chest, what you want to do is basically jump down and this is where you should be able to find one of those bigger Thunder Boys or Thunder Brutes. But um, yes, if you fell the tree, it's going to be even easier to spot him. I think I killed him like three to four times right now. And the final drop is a hair splitter, the highest rarity item which I found so far. So even though you have a chance of finding legendaries right here, it does take quite some time to take him out if you're not very geared up. So in my opinion, this is not the best way to quickly get your hands on legendary gear, while it definitely is an amazing place to farm a ton of runes, as after the combat, you can quickly get back to the main menu and get back to this chest. So if you combine this with the previous farm we talked about, both picking up the chest and then dealing with the boss, I think this is a pretty nice one to do. Anyways, last but not least, I found an amazing farm earlier today. I woke up like at 5 or 6 a.m. I thought like, why not revisit our Sun Temple where we also picked up the Ghost Glider, right? Well, there is actually a much better chest to farm right here. So if we open the map, this is where we want to be. The Sun Temple and Scatterbone all the way to the bottom right, very close to the farm we just talked about. But yeah, this is where we have this little shooting puzzle at the entrance. So you first have to shoot the two buttons at the sides and then the one right behind us and this will open up the temple.
At the very top, by the way, you also have a silver chest if you want to pick that up. Well, I don't think these are interesting to farm as they have a much higher chance of dropping legendaries. So when you enter the temple, you will find a couple of those bad guys, I think level 30-ish. But um, we also have two graves, one right there and another one right here, ladies and gentlemen. I missed this one entirely the first time when I entered this place. But if you open it up, you also have a pretty nice chance of not only finding the eagle set, which we just picked up, but also legendaries of the absolute highest level. So what we're going to do right now is get back to the main menu and show you my quick travel, which I placed right here. So um, I did a lot of bombing to make this happen. And yes, you can see that my foundation is very weird right now because it basically collides with the spawn of um, the world right here. Let me quickly get up there on the balcony. But if we go down, well, you can see that we actually have our building area conflicting with the chest while this overrides the spawn. I mean, you want to see what I attempted right here. Try and make a tunnel through to basically get to the treasure a little bit easier, but that simply didn't work because the walls kept respawning, even though they were inside my flame protection. Every single time this seemed to respawn, so then I knew for sure that even with the flame shrine very close to the chest, it would also override the spawn. So right now we basically have our shrine right next to it, basically conflicting with this loot, but still every time when we relock, it will also respawn. Anyways, this is where you can not place an altar. A little bit to the sides is where you can actually do it. And this was basically the closest place to the treasure where you're able to place a shrine as well. Once again, we're going to get our hands on 12 items to check out the drop chance for legendaries. Pretty special drops right here, but look at that. So we basically got our hands on three legendary items of all the highest level in the game. We also got a ton of these blues. So surprisingly, only one epic this time, but actually three set parts of the eagle eye chest and also one of the elder chest. I think these are the absolute best sets to get your hands on. So I would say this is an amazing farm to get your hands on both legendary weapons of the absolute highest level, but also the best armor sets in the game. The nice thing is you don't even need to upgrade your flame shrine for it. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this farm and what you think is the best farm in the game. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Let's quickly go over every single one of them. The first farm we checked out was near the iron mine. I think it's an amazing one if you're going to get your hands on legendaries as quick as possible to basically prepare yourself for the desert zone. While unfortunately it's not the absolute best in terms of the item level legendaries you will find right here. It does come with amazing sets for the end game but not level 25 loot this i think is one of the best farms in the game because you simply find the best legendaries right here of level 25 but unfortunately the item level of the armor sets is also 23 the same level but different set parts compared to the iron mine then we also have Cadiz's farm at Deep Cut. I think this is an amazing farm to actually find those highest level armor sets. While unfortunately, weapon wise, finding those legendaries is going to be slightly more difficult right here because of the chest types. You could move to this farm to get your absolute best stuff in the game, but it's only going to be the same every single time. So amazing to salvage for an unlimited amount of runes for all that enchanting. If you want to have the absolute best weapons in the game, legendaries of 25, I think you should either go to this sun temple in the southeast or the one in the east in general. Armor set wise, you want to go for either the Deep Cat or once again, the Sun Temple. So I think these two right here, including that one, basically cover the best stuff to have. Guys, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite farm is. Would love to hear about it. Maybe you even found a better one. Would be very awesome if you could share it with the community as well. You're also very welcome on the Discord to share these places. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, a big thanks for watching. That's everything you need to know to get your hands on the absolute best best weapons and armor in Enshrouded. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. You have no idea how much you help out the channel and of course also other people who are looking for legendary loot. Right now though, it's 4am out. So yes, have an amazing day. I'll catch you in the next video or live stream. Take care. Peace.